My name is Ethan Feinschreiber, and I have a passion for educating the world about snakes. Looking for more rare snakes is always an adventure, especially when I find them. But then it's easy to look past the more common snakes you may run into. You see them all around your backyard, your garden, and around local rivers and lakes. The Wandering Garter Snake. They are so often seen, not because there are more of them, but because they love to explore and wander the world around them, hence their name. And even though they're super common among the western United States, they still have many features to admire that some other snakes simply don't possess. Here it is, the most common snake in northern Utah, the wandering garter snake. This is a snake I really wanted to get up for the close for the cameras for season one, Snakes of Utah, because this is a snake you will very much likely run into if you're if you come visit Utah looking for snakes. This was my very first species I ever found in Utah, and I was seeing this huge population of them near my house. And some days I just go out into this little field of place with, of trash that I'd flip over, and on a good day I would see up to six garter snakes in just one in this one little spot. As long as there's at least some sort of natural pond or lake or river or something, even if you are surrounded by cities, houses, suburbs, these snakes will still live there. Like these guys are incredibly resilient and incredibly hardy snakes and you see them everywhere. Um, garter snakes are snakes that just like to explore a lot more in general and that's why you see them more. They get that name because they can be found everywhere like they they are found all over the place you can find wandering garter snakes uh, not only around almost all of utah but you can also find them in nevada oregon washington montana idaho colorado new mexico arizona california they're all over the place really this is a species you'll see out during the day most of the time however during the summer months when it gets too hot for these guys to come out during the day they will be out at dawn and dusk and then sometimes they can be found out crossing roads at night so this snake is perfectly adapted for this habitat because it blends in like crazy. There can be whole big bunches of them in one place and you wouldn't even know it because these guys blend in so well. They rarely bite, but it can happen. One of the first garter snakes I found this year, for some reason it didn't musk on me, so it ended up deciding to bite me instead. And I think maybe that's just because it felt like it couldn't musk. And so that was the only thing it had to resort to last. So it is possible to see these snakes try to bite and they will if they feel really threatened, but most of the time they'll just wiggle around, try to get out of your grip and they will absolutely intend intentionally smear you with the musk. I mean, they'll bring their tail up and just wipe it all over the place. So this is a non-venomous species. This is a completely harmless snake. There's nothing to worry about when it comes to getting bitten by this snake. The only thing irregular um, about this snake when it bites you is the fact that it has an anticoagulant in their saliva. Um, some people consider it a type of venom. I, however, do not. Even if I did, it's nothing to be scared of. In fact, it actually aids in keeping you from getting an infection if you actually happen to get bitten by one. So these guys are one of the first snakes to come out in the year. Um, I have seen valley garter snakes out uh, in February before, and last year I found one of these, and it was November 5th. These snakes are viviparous, meaning that they give birth to live young just like us humans. They do not lay eggs. Instead, they are formed in a placenta. And these guys, like a lot of other species of garter snakes, will congregate in what is known as a breeding ball. Many upwards of 30 individuals can be in one place, and almost all of those individuals except for one will usually be male. And that is because they're all trying to mate with a single female. <laughs> poor, poor girl. Make sure you stay tuned because I am out here looking for other wandering garter snakes, but ones that are actually black because they are melanistic. Thank you so much for taking the time to educate yourself on the wandering garter snake. So I'll see you guys next time with possibly an even cooler snake. To find snakes in Utah, it's best to be around the mountains and deserts outside of town. This is because proper habitat throughout the valley has been replaced with urban areas for us humans to live in. Habitat destruction is a major problem here, and it brings me such joy knowing that there are snakes capable of living among residential areas for us to admire. And despite how much we've invaded their habitat, they've still managed to establish themselves as the most common snake in northern Utah. If you enjoyed this episode of Snakes on the Brain, let me know by giving this video a like. And if you want to learn about other snakes I've caught, make sure to subscribe.